We're in the zone now. We're going to measure pressure. And these are devices that you might actually use. One of them I can almost pronounce, but I can't quite. We'll get to it. It's number four. So you've got to sit tight till we get to number four. The first one is, oh, it used to be like when your car tire blew out, you actually got out of the car and fixed it yourself. Like you actually had little tools and devices that would let you do that. Like you'd measure the pressure and you'd pump it up and you'd fix the flat. Nobody does that anymore. Um, you can't even get a spare tire out of a car anymore. Does anybody try to get a spare tire out of a Honda? No, yeah, you've got to be like a mechanical engineer to do that. I tried for two hours and then called AAA and then just went and got a cup of coffee and felt like it was, okay. Um, so say we want to measure the pressure uh, in this vessel, P. So you could imagine it's a tire if you want. Uh, good Lord. Why is this positive? Yeah, that's just the hydrostatic equation we derived on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a rho and these are p's. I don't know what's going on there. Something must be wrong. Um, okay, so this is the vessel. We want to measure its pressure. We don't know what its pressure is. We want to measure it. So let's attach it to a little gauge. So you know the little, little gauge where the thing sticks out? So you could pretend that that's based on a spring. I've never actually taken one apart, so I'm not sure, okay? But one way some pressure gauges work, I don't know about the ones that you use on your car, that you used to use on your car, uh, has a little slider. Let's imagine we have a spring and a slider like that, and we have a spring with spring constant K inside this little deal here, and the gas pushes on basically just this piston against the spring. And these old devices are like plastic and they're cheap and you get them, you know, at the car wash. They aren't going to have a vacuum inside of them. We have P atmosphere inside the little spring uh, loaded mechanism, right? So that's going to happen. And we want to think about is where's the gauge going to go, right? So we have an X axis here. If you're a physicist, you analyze this with an X axis. You don't have to, but that's the better way to go. Okay, so what happens is you hook it up and you let the gas go this way and it fills the chamber in what happens, right? So, so the slider moves, moves to indicate pressure. All right, slider moves to indicate pressure and eventually it stops. So we want to say, where does it go? All right. So we're going to say the sum of the forces and the X on the slider is zero, right? Moves to indicate pressure and then comma, it stops. It reaches some new equilibrium position. Okay, some of the forces on the X of the slider. Uh, let's see, this pressure is pushing it that way. The slider has area A on its surface. Okay. So the pressure you want times A is pushing it to the right. Uh, the spring, uh, let's do the pressure on the other side though, right? There's pressure on this side, Atmospheric pressure pushing it back uh -huh. times A. And then one other force is the spring. The spring is pushing it back, right? Hooke's law, minus Kx. If you go forward, we'll call this the origin. If you go forward in X, it pushes back. So minus Kx equals zero, right? So you could solve that. One of two ways, you could say, what is X telling us? What does the position tell us? And then you'd want to solve for the pressures in terms of the position. Okay, so let's sort of, uh, that's a minus. Let's see. Minus X equals zero. So let's say, what does X tell us? So the reason I'm trying to say it that way is I'm trying to say, let's solve it this way. Let's get P, let's get the constants in X over here. Right, so bring KX over there. Pull the A out, and you get K over AX. Trying to justify my algebra here. That was a Madonna song from the 80s, you don't remember. P minus P ATM. That's what you're left with, right? So as this thing moves in X, is it telling you the pressure P? No, it's telling you the pressure P above atmospheric pressure. That's what it's really telling you. Another way to look at it is if you say, okay, what is P? What is P? Okay, solve it for P, and you see that the pressure that you get is pressure atmospheric 
plus K over A X. So you can see basically having atmospheric pressure in the gauge is affecting the reading, right? Is PA a force? Yes. That is the pressure of this gas against that wall, P times A. Um, so the, the reason we point this out is it's something called the gauge pressure, okay? So basically, it measures gauge pressure. All right, so everything around us always has a constant atmospheric pressure pushing on it. So rather than try to make devices that try to take out that atmospheric pressure, you often report pressures relative to the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so just to be clear about that, if you have your tire here uh, and you inflate it to 32 PSI or whatever your manual says, if you don't want to find the manual, you can open the car door and there's like a little placard right there on the wall of the door that tells you the pressure. You don't have to go find the manual. I just learned that last year. I'm 47. I just figured that out. So I'm going to let you have that at 20. <coughs> the amount of time you're going to save from that is going to be huge. Okay, so it says 32 PSI. That's really 32 PSI uh, G. Okay. <clears throat> that really means uh, 32 PSI. I mean, what's really in the tire? <laughs> the actual pressure P inside is 32 plus 14.7, right? Because this is P atmosphere. So you've got 32 plus 14.7 inside, but you have 14.7 outside. Right. So the 14.7s kind of cancel out in terms of the forces they put on the wall of the tire. That's why we only care about the 32. Okay? So that's when, we meet, when they say PSIG. That means gauge. So if we look at what is this thing actually telling us, it's actually telling us the PSIG. This is the gauge pressure. This is how much pressure above the atmospheric pressure. Okay. So you'll also see PSI... Uh, well, let's not worry about that. Sometimes it's written PSIA for absolute, PSIG for gauge, PSIV for vacuum when you're below atmosphere. But really the main one you'll see written all the time is PSIG. Or sometimes they leave it off. But you just got to realize that you can now see why atmosphere is, is not included is because in the, in the device there's atmospheric pressure inside of here. So based on your understanding of pressure now you can see why. They could sell it evacuated, right? You could have a vacuum sealed pressure meter. But then... Everybody would have to have one. It would be confusing. Okay. That was the first pressure gauge. What did it take for us to understand it? Almost nothing. It took the relationship between pressure and force. Right. That's all we had to do. 